Welcome to another edition of Into the Issues. I'm your host, Steve Pappas. Today we're honored to have our governor, Phil Scott, with us. Governor, thank you for being here. Oh, thanks for having me on, Steve. Yeah. Um, it's called Into the Issues because there's always a lot of issues to talk about. There and, are a number and, of issues, yeah. <laughs> and with you in particular, it can, it, we, you never know where it's going to go. But I'm going to start because we are only weeks away from the legislative session starting. And I know that lawmakers are kind of getting ready and, and, and trying to figure out what their agenda is going to be. Do you, do you have an idea? I mean, I'm sure you do. What, what are you looking for from the upcoming uh, you know, legislative session? <clears throat> I'm not sure that a lot has changed uh, since a year ago. And uh, what uh, we're focused on, what I've been focused on, actually hasn't changed a lot in the last three or four years. And it's, for me, it's, it's about those three uh, strategic goals. Uh, and it's to grow the economy, make Vermont more affordable, protect the most vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And um, high on that uh, list is our demographics, our workforce challenges. Uh, we have fewer people working today than in 2009, about 15,000 fewer. Mm. Uh, and we're an aging population. We need more youth. We need more people here in the state to take the jobs that we have that are available today. We know they are. I mm. mean, you probably talked to some of your customers uh, who are, are looking for, for people. And um, what we're finding is that uh, uh, we just don't have enough people to fill the jobs. 2.2% unemployment, uh, lowest in the country. Mm -hmm. and, and when you look at that, when you break that down, it's, that's like 3,000 people on unemployment right now. Mm -hmm. And when you go to the job links page on, uh, in our Department of Labor, uh, and these aren't all the jobs available, there's 8,500 jobs listed. Right. So that tells you the whole story right yeah, it's there. It's a double-edged sword to have yeah, a low unemployment absolutely. rate. Absolutely. A lot of governors uh, across the country are, 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 you know, pounding the table and saying, look what I've done. Mm -hmm. And and I said, I keep saying, you know, this uh, it is a double-edged sword. It's uh, good news in some respects. But from our standpoint, it's just that we don't have the supply. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're focused so much on trying to, to bring more people into the state uh, to, be, uh, to be welcoming to... to anyone uh, who wants to work here uh, because we do have uh, jobs available. VT Digger just had a um, story that came out in the last day or two that talk, is talking about that we're seeing the number of people fleeing, leaving the state and that that's, that's having an effect. Why do you think that Vermont is in the challenge that it is in right now? What, what got us to this point? Well, <laughs> I, I don't think it's, it's all about fleeing, mm -hmm. I, although there is enough of that. Uh, and we have to be cognizant of that. Mm -hmm. uh, but when you really look at uh, the numbers and where we are, you think about our, our K through 12 education system, uh, and we have 30,000 fewer students than 20 years ago, mm -hmm. and that continues to drop. Every single day we lose more students because we've lost a crop, so to speak. So when you think about 30,000 fewer uh, kids um, from going from a high of, uh, uh, at one time, almost 110,000. Now we're in the, in the uh, low 70s. That is our workforce. Uh, those are the folks that, uh, that have families, buy homes, you know, buy products, uh, part of our workforce as well, as well as part of our economy. Mm -hmm. So if we don't have that within the state, uh, we have to rely on more immigration from outside the state. Uh, so we do have people leaving. Uh, I, I know myself, I have, uh, and I'm sure you know of uh, people who have left. I had a, a cousin who left the state uh, uh, to pursue a, a career in Tennessee. Well, pretty soon uh, she left, and uh, then her sister decided to go, and then her mom and dad decided to go, and pretty soon you have a dozen people uh, move to Tennessee. We need to turn that around. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to attract as many as we can into the state and have them bring their families with them eventually. And that's why we've been focused on things like uh, the stay to stay weekends, mm -hmm. uh, where we, we know people might be interested. They've come here to, as tourists uh, to our state, but we want to show them a little bit more. Uh, so we have these stay to stay programs throughout the state, geographically located, whether it's Bennington or Rutland or Newport or, or, and, and uh, other, other places that are contemplating this. And uh, to, to show them uh, the area, to show them the community, to, to uh, bring them um, the jobs and the real estate and so forth, and sh just show them, see what, whether that community is the right fit for them. 
And uh, we've been successful in that, uh, bringing uh, people in because of that. But as well, the remote worker program, uh, mm -hmm. which received a lot of attention, both positive and negative. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, but the remote worker program was uh, something where uh, we were going to uh, uh, give, um, give people uh, up to $10,000 uh, to help with their moving expenses and so forth. And we received criticism. Uh, and this was a, a legislative initiative. I want to give credit where credit's due. Uh, I wasn't sure if it's going to work, but, but it has worked. Uh, when we brought in uh, hundreds of people uh, into the state, uh, the average, uh, average age is, has been 39. Mm -hmm. uh, the average wage has been about uh, 36,000. They've been bringing in family members, so it's, it's actually uh, about uh, 400 people who have moved uh, to the state as a result. And, uh, and the average uh, payout uh, isn't $10,000. It's more like uh, the average is about $3,400 or $3,500. And, the, and again, we receive criticism from people, uh, everyday Vermonters who have been, uh, been here for, for quite some time saying, you know, what about me? You know, how about sending me a check for $10,000 uh, after suffering through all this burdensome regulation and taxation and so forth? I could use a break too. Well, you have to somehow explain uh, and rationalize that by bringing more people in, filling those jobs uh, and, and paying those taxes, uh, they actually spreading the burden out uh, amongst many. So it is helping uh, people who are here, but we need more of it. Uh, that remote, remote worker program, the State of Stay, uh, has received a lot of attention on uh, social media. And, uh, and it's been positive. Uh, I, can't, I travel um, throughout the country to, to National Governors Association meetings, and, and I'm always uh, people are asking me about the program. Mm. And, and, I think I have my checkbook with them, but uh, with me, uh, but uh, uh, but they're interested in it. So we've received millions of dollars worth of free advertising uh, just because of those programs. But we need more of that, mm -hmm. more outside the box thinking, more creative uh, thoughts about how do, the common goal of how do we bring more people into the state. The Rutland Herald and the Times Argus have been running a series for the last year of commentaries solicited by. Uh, we solicited um, higher education institutions to offer commentary about the challenges that they're facing. And um, UVM's president just published one this past weekend We talked a lot about investing in Vermont and investing in the Vermonters in Vermont as well as the folks coming in from out of state. And um, higher ed is definitely one of the areas where um, we seem to be attracting a fair number of, of people and hopefully, you know, fingers crossed, keeping those young people here, probably not to the levels that we want to, but they're, they are coming to Vermont and kind of falling in love with it, right. um, which is great. But there are other pockets of Vermont that I know that you are interested in, in having workforce development and um, you, you're a big proponent of, of expanding trades, for example. Um, and, and things going on like that at VTC. What, you know, I know that you've been in Quebec and in other places trying to draw businesses, right. manufacturing, other things down here. You know, what are the jobs that are going to help Vermont kind of turn the corner? Yeah, well again, uh, it's a balance mm -hmm. as well because we, uh, we have jobs available right now mm -hmm. here in the state uh, manufacturing healthcare, mm -hmm. uh, uh, we have a ton uh, of jobs severe, in healthcare. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and and throughout the trades as well. Uh, when you think about uh, the average age of a construction worker or, or a person in the trades, it's it's getting up there. Yeah, uh, and and you think about the impact that's going to have on all of us in, in years to come when we need a carpenter, a plumber, electrician, uh, auto automotive technician. Um, these are you know this is what uh, rebuilds and keeps keeps our economy going. Mm -hmm. uh, so we need to continue to focus on on different areas, all different types of approaches. Uh, that's why I talk a lot about my cradle to career vision. Uh, I believe that we should be putting uh, more resources into early care and learning uh, because it, having a construction background, giving our, our kids uh, the best possible, uh, the firmest foundation possible is, uh, is key uh, mm -hmm. for their success and uh, to, for, for the future of society in general uh, because it just gives them all the right tools they need uh, to be successful in life. 
but as well on the other end uh, in higher education that um, we focus a lot uh, on four-year programs, uh, four-year uh, college uh, degrees. And, uh, you know, that's not for everyone. Um, uh, One-year, two-year degrees are as important. Uh, and uh, Certificate and, programs. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I think, uh, uh, again, trying to, um, trying to, to bring about uh, uh, different approaches and, and, and let uh, our kids uh, experiment a bit while in school uh, about what they're interested in. Mm -hmm because there's, there's viable careers in, in every sector, and uh, we just need to, to pay attention and give them the best possible education possible with the money that we're spending today. I'm not talking about spending more money because we, we already spend, you know, right now uh, it's gone up another $100 million uh, since last year. Hmm. Uh, it's going to be $100 million more uh, this year in, in uh, uh, education spending. So we're up to about a billion eight. Uh, which is significant when you think about our entire budget. Uh, all in with federal funding and everything, we spend about $6 billion. Um, and about half of that, if, basically about half of that is state dollars. We spend a billion eight uh, for education, by far the largest uh, expenditure state of state dollars uh, that we have. So. Um, I believe, and we have a shrinking po student population at the same time. I believe we just have to have the courage to think outside the box and, and approach this all differently. Uh, and I've, I've made this comment before, but if, if we were to wipe the sl slate clean, uh, start over, and I was, came to, to Steve uh, and, and, and I, I told, asked you to develop a, an education system uh, that uh, that would educate our, our 73,000 kids and here's a here's a check for a billion eight I'd say you do it you design it all differently uh, mm -hmm. than it is today and and, uh, and I think that we just have to have the courage to think again outside the box create the best education system possible the best in the country and when uh, we're small enough and nimble enough to do this if we could do that that would be the one of the best economic tools that we could possibly ask for. That would draw families uh, to our state. A lot of those are mandates that are that tie up that right. money. So the obvious question is why hasn't it happened? Why can't we hit that reset button? You know, I, I think there's just so many different opinions on, on um, education in Vermont and there are some who say there's nothing we can do about it. It's local control and, and it, it is in some respects. Mm -hmm. I mean it is about local control but I think Act 60 took care of uh, a good share of local control. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, again, I think we just have to, to create as much flexibility as possible uh, and uh, provide uh, some of the mandates have restricted uh, some of that creative thinking as well. And I think we just have to move beyond that and, and again, have some courage mm -hmm. uh, and, and do this differently. Because, because the goal should be what's best for the kids. What do they need? Uh, and uh, instead of uh, being nostalgic about some of what we've had in the past, what do they need to be successful in life? Because it's different today than it was then. Mm -hmm. Does it concern you overall that the, the population of Vermont really hasn't grown in 15 years? Yeah, it's stagnant. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's very concerning to me uh, because that's, that is the root of all of our issues right now, uh, that we, we have a a population that hasn't changed, as you said, for you know, 10 to 20 years, getting older, uh, health care usage increases yeah. as we age, and, uh, and we don't have the youth here uh, to, to broaden that pool of the younger, healthier population that pays into the system uh, that doesn't utilize it. Mm -hmm. That's what we're missing. So obviously some of our health care costs continue to rise. Our prescription drugs uh, prices continue to rise. I mean, that's why we we took the step of, of trying to uh, find a way to purchase from Canada. Uh, and I, you know, I still think that we're moving forward on that. There's some uh, there's there's some uh, um, um, promise there, uh, but uh, but that's not the total answer either. Mm -hmm. What we need is more people here. Mm -hmm. um, the Democrats are uh, certainly teeing up minimum wage and paid family leave, are, are those the kinds of things that you feel are 
um, ideas that will attract Vermonters or, or attract people to Vermont? Well, again, I look for uh, common goals mm -hmm. uh, in every everything that we uh, uh, that we contemplate, and uh, and the common goal I see with the minimum wage increase, the minimum wage to fifteen dollars is what they're uh, anticipating and promoting. And I've said uh, that I believe our, our the the common goal is we want more money in the pockets of Vermonters, right? So there's a couple different approaches. One is uh, is to artificially raise the, your wages. Uh, the other is to make sure that you're not putting any undue uh, costs on, on Vermonters and, and pay attention to that as well. Uh, and market, uh, the market uh, has, a, has an effect as well, supply and demand. Mm -hmm. We're seeing it right now in real time uh, that, uh, that that, uh, that the wages are increasing. Uh, and, it, you know, if, if, if a higher minimum wage uh, was a tool that attracted more people to a state, we have one of the highest now. And it's, it obviously isn't working. Mm -hmm. We have New Hampshire right across the river. They're at 725. And their economy's doing quite well. Mm -hmm. So, it would lead me to believe that that isn't the answer. Um, that that uh, fifteen come to Vermont and and get fifteen dollar uh, fifteen dollar minimum wage. I'm not sure resonates. I just I don't think it works. But again, uh, we've uh, we've taken steps over the years, uh, increasing the minimum wage and tie it to the uh, rate of inflation. It's up over. It's up around eleven dollars now, mm -hmm. and uh, and I believe that that's a that. We need to, to pay attention because we don't want to lose some of the businesses, Main Street businesses, and some of the rural areas uh, that are struggling to get by. Um, we don't want to penalize them either. Mm -hmm. And they're mad. Yeah. yeah I mean, I'm sure you hear, of, uh, I, hear I, it I, loud and clear yeah. as a Republican governor yeah. in, uh, in a pretty, pretty Republican state, or at least used to be. Used to be. Yeah. Um, um, as well, uh, the uh, um, paid family leave. Mm -hmm. I uh, agree. I think it's uh, it's time we we move forward with some sort of a family leave program. I believe uh, that we should do a voluntary uh, family leave program first, mm -hmm. uh, and build the structure uh, necessary to move forward. And if uh, in a few years uh, the voluntary uh, family leave doesn't work you'll have the structure in place to do what you want. But right now, um, to, to uh, have a payroll tax that's going to raise 25 to $80 million, to me, just doesn't make sense uh, right now. Let's build the structure, let's have a voluntary plan, and, uh, and then let's see where that brings us. Uh, and, I, and I believe that it has promise. And again, then you build the structure first, uh, walk before you run, and then uh, see where we go from there. Governor Snelling rather famously um, came up with a, a budget that cut expenses and raised taxes and fees to a certain degree. Um, and you, you up to this point have pretty much held the line that you don't want to put any undue burden on Vermonters and they have said pretty loud and clear they don't want you to. Yeah. Um, does that tie your hands though? Well, I don't know if it ties uh, my hands uh, because what we did in the first two years put a line in the sand, and, and I was rigid about that. I went through a few vetoes uh, uh, as a result, uh, but I didn't believe, I thought we, we were spending more than we are taking in. We had been doing that for quite a number of years, and we had to keep raising taxes in order to satisfy our spending right. uh, habits. So I, uh, I said, we, we need to stop, and I made that promise during the campaign, and I adhered to it. So for two years, we didn't raise taxes or fees. Uh, uh, after I was elected the, the second time uh, last year, I said, we can take a look. You know, if there's, uh, if there's fees that make sense, uh, as long as we, we control our spending, as long as we uh, are under the constraints of, of a growth rate calculation that doesn't grow any, our spending doesn't grow any faster than our economy, uh, we've taken that correction in, the t in those two years, we can move a little bit, which we did. Uh, we. Uh, uh, and we adhered to that and kept uh, within those constraints. Uh, and that's what I'd like to do this year as well. Mm -hmm. uh, stay within the growth rate calculation, make sure that uh, we're not spending any, any uh, faster than someone's pocketbook. Mm 
-hmm. and, and I think that's important to Vermonters. If we're going to attract more people here, it's got to be affordable for them. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, uh, it's all about, uh, all about balance. But we have some other pressures as well. I mean, for three years now, uh, and well, I think we'll see um, uh, some um, more of a surplus uh, this year, uh, like we have the last two years. Uh, even while we've reduced spending or, or s stopped uh, spending to grow, the growth of spending uh, as much as we had in previous years, and, uh, and uh, same with the fees and so forth. We've seen more revenue coming in. Uh, the economy's a little bit healthier. Uh, seen more uh, revenue coming in, and uh, but the the frustrating part is even though we have more money on the bottom line, uh, we didn't keep up over the last uh, couple of decades, two or three decades, didn't keep up with our, our, our promises made with pensions. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, back in 2009, I believe uh, Governor Douglas put us on a path. Uh, to repaying and catching up. Well, that's now ramped up to where it's almost uh, like this year it'll be a $125 million payment we have to make uh, on this, and it's going to go until 2038. It'll go up as high as $200 million a year just to catch up. So when we have a surplus of $50 million or $100 million, it all goes towards that. Mm -hmm. And all the while, um, we, we, we still have our ongoing obligations with pensions. You know, the other was just to catch up. Uh, pensions, uh, salary increases, and cost pressures like health care and so forth. So uh, we have to find money within the system, and more, be more efficient uh, in order to stay within the growth rate calculation. So the pensions are tying your hands. The pensions are, are something that, uh, but, but it's a promise made. Yeah. And that's something I've, I've been consistent with. If, uh, if some, and I'm not going to, to do this, but if they want to do something with, with pensions in the future, that's fine. But we have to fulfill the promises we made to those who uh, were engaged in the process before. So those who are receiving pensions now, uh, we can't do anything with those. I would not, uh, would not promote that, and I don't think it's fair uh, because we made an agreement. Going into the session, do you feel like there are certain challenges kind of right out of the gate, or do you feel like it, as you say, it, it kind of is going to be a, a what very well could be uh, just a continuation of what had already occurred? I, th I think a lot of uh, it will be the continuation. I mean, we'll see uh, the pay, uh, pay family leave. I think we'll move forward. It passed one, I think, the Senate, not the House, or vice versa. Uh, same with minimum wage, passed one body and not the other. Uh, so they'll they'll uh, be in play, um, and uh, you know the the legalization or, or not legalization. We've already legalized marijuana, but uh, the uh, industrialization, commercialization of uh, marijuana will be uh, an issue. Mm -hmm. um, and I've said uh, from from my standpoint, um, <clears throat> I'm okay with moving forward, but I have three conditions uh, that are important to me, and I will not I won't sign it unless we have that. One is uh, roadside testing, uh, a saliva test. It's the only one that we have at this point in time. And that isn't just to detect marijuana, it's just to detect uh, impaired driving, whether uh, there's uh, um, alcohol involved or prescription drugs or illicit drugs or, or marijuana or a combination of the three or four, uh, that we should know that uh, and then determine impairment from there. Uh, the other is uh, communities if uh, that they should be uh, they should have to opt in uh, to a retail market. So it's not uh, the uh, some have said they'd have to opt out. I'm saying it should be the other way around. Uh, let the communities who want to have a retail market opt into this and take a, a vote of their select board or or or, or their the uh, town town yeah. whatever it is uh, whatever structure government structure they have. Uh, before they move forward. The other third uh, condition is uh, just more money up front for education and make sure that we don't repeat mistakes made by other states and, uh, and learn from them. Mm -hmm. So you endeared yourself to the, the marijuana community um, last year. You have irritated your base um, on your position on drugs and being pro-choice. Um, looking to a third term, do you see those challenges being a hold back in polling numbers getting reelected? 
Well, again, I, I haven't uh, I haven't committed to running again, uh, so I don't know if there'll be a third term or not. I'm I'm going to focus on the legislative session and uh, do my job. I, I think that's important. And from my standpoint, again, I uh, I've never uh, been one uh, to uh, adhere to one straight party line. Uh, I'm. Uh, I'm fairly independent. Uh, I want to do what I think is right. I think that's why I was elected, uh, and I do. There are times when uh, I irritate uh, both uh, the base and my adversaries uh, with positions I take, uh, but, uh, but I do them for the right reasons, uh, from, again, from my standpoint. And, uh, but that gives you the freedom uh, as well, because it's, this isn't, uh, I didn't take this position. I didn't get involved in politics to satisfy my ego or to attain power. It was uh, to try and move Vermont in a different direction and to pay attention to things like demographics and workforce and the economy and so forth. Um, so uh, I, uh, if I continue to do what I think is right and best and for the right reasons, uh, I'll live with the consequences. Mm -hmm. And I was quite willing to do that. I took some, uh, took some action on, on different issues uh, in my first two years. Uh, and I was, uh, I owned up to it, and and I uh, said that if that wasn't what uh, the voters wanted, that they would, uh, they would, they would let me know, mm -hmm. and I was willing to accept that. And uh, if I decide to run again, uh, I, I'd be in the same position. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, it's okay. Uh, we, these shouldn't be lifetime positions, and and this isn't, uh, this isn't something that uh, you sh you shouldn't, you shouldn't do everything, uh, and and. To, to get it reelected, right? Mm -hmm. you, you should you should govern uh, according to what's right for your state and, and for the general population. Well, on that note, the the national political scene at this very moment, as we're talking, is probably as shrill as it's ever been, and that has to be taking a toll on the politics of the state. You have to be seeing it at just about every corner. Um, in the couple minutes that we have left, what, you know, how is that discourse and that lack of listening to one another and talking over one another and mean spirited, mean spiritedness? How is that affecting Vermont? Yeah, well, the lack of respect and decency uh, that and civility that I've seen uh, across the country is is concerning. Um, we become so tribalized and we receive our information so differently than we did. Uh, 20 or 30 years ago, and I think that's part of the problem as well. Bring uh, back newspapers. Well, it's true though. I mean, you don't you don't get uh, independent news. You you turn on something, and 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 it reinforces what you're thinking. Mm -hmm. you, if you don't like what you're hearing, find another station, and you'll get exactly what you want, and reinforce all those thoughts that you've been having, and you don't listen uh, to the other side. Uh, and I've throughout my uh, political life, I've I've tried to listen. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've tried to do things again for the right reasons and uh, sometimes I'm not always right and, and I have to learn uh, from that and, and accept that. Um, and I'm really concerned with the polarization we're seeing throughout our country. This is uh, tearing us apart. It's, uh, it's either you're in on one side or the other and for those of us who are more moderate in the center, um, it's very uncomfortable for us because uh, the others have made their mind up. We're in the middle and, and so so the focus is on us, and, and if we're not in one camp or another, uh, we're being uh, we're being eaten up by both sides, and uh, that's that's concerning because I, I believe that uh, the vast majority of people are uh, more independent and more moderate and more in the middle uh, than. Well, than the good news here. is there's more of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but uh, we'll uh, I'll continue to try and promote civility, uh, and uh, and I've never uh, I've never adhered to the, some of the, the discourse that uh, they were seeing throughout our country. And uh, I think we need better role models in this country. I was talking with you before uh, about Travis Roy. I mean, there's a role model mm -hmm. for you. And uh, if you haven't seen his story or heard his story, Check you should it out. reflect. Yeah. And, and, you, and your, your problems will probably pale in comparison. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so I just think we need to be better people yeah. and, and strive to be that be the person you perceive yourself to be every single day. Yeah. Governor, thank you for this conversation. Yeah, thanks very much. It was really much. good to see you. Nice to see you as well. Yes.
And thank you for watching. Uh, we really appreciate your support. And uh, until next time, this has been Into the Issues.